days go by, it's a bigger love, the after effects. Hey, what's up, guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and I've got a tutorial for you guys this week. <laughs> so I was looking at this thing on Dribble, and I thought it was pretty cool. I don't know how you say it. Oh, it's French. Adiome Jeremy. <laughs> I don't know. Um, anyway, so I saw this on Dribble the other day, and I think maybe it was on the list or something uh, that they send weekly. But I thought this was pretty cool look. It's somewhat similar to some stuff I had done before for a, a client that uh, does painting. And so I thought maybe I'd try to recreate this or at least come up with a version that I, you know, thought was cool. So, so here's what I did, and uh, I kind of wanted to make a transition, so I did. Workbench TV, learn stuff. So I'm just gonna go over the basics of how I built this and I'm not gonna like just go through and click and change things around. It's kind of difficult um, as even uh, our, uh, our source said, it was a bit tricky, but I'm finally happy with the result. And I found the same, same thing for my version. So the first thing I did was I made radio waves I'll show you the settings. I'm going to, I'm going to make this project file available for downloads. So you can go through it and, and see, you know, so you can change it to your heart's desire. And to be honest, I don't remember exactly how I made this, but basically what we're doing here is uh, a bunch of lines with a gap that's about the size of another line. And I took this frame and the very next frame. So basically what's happening here is I'm freeze framing frame 10 and 11, I believe. So as you can see, it covers up most of the screen between the two. And that just has to do with the frequency and expansion and all this stuff. You just got to play with it until it gets to a place where, you know, the lines make uh, what you want. You can also do it, if you don't care about them getting bigger, you can do it with a shape layer that makes, uh, that uses a repeater that scales up each successive one by like 1.1% or so. But uh, because of that, the thickness of the line increases too. I haven't really figured out a way to not do that. I'm sure maybe there is. Maybe that'll be a new tutorial in the future if I figure it out, but so far, I haven't. So from here, I initially made uh, like a gradient ramp uh, that was radial so that each one of these was delayed a little bit. But what I found was that uh, it was too perfect and you could still read the word as it moved around and it didn't really look all that cool. So instead, I made this time mat, which is a little more variable, as you can see. So what I did was I took some fractal noise. I'll turn these off. Took some fractal noise and I stretched the crap out of it in width, not height. Uh, scaled it back down in height. You can change that around, but these are pretty good settings. Um, made it the size of my comp. The way Polar coordinates work is, works is it only takes it the size of the comp. So if you need something that goes all the way to the edge, you need to make this comp bigger than your the comp you're putting it into. I didn't need to do that because my text fits in that space. And so then you're left with this gap line, and all I did there was do a little radial blur. I didn't want it to be super... Uh, blurry I guess so <laughs> I didn't want it to be super blurry so basically what I did was instead of going out to here and having it be a little less gradual and and, and more smooth I wanted it to be kind of jarring so that uh, as it hits different spots it kind of looks a little more cool and maybe it breaks apart and does different things so then we go into radial mat a which is I think frame 10 not frame 12 look at that I took 12 and 10 so 10 and 12 so all we're doing here is using a freeze frame of frame 12, which looks like that, to mat our time mat layer so that we have this separated into the, the rings and then each one is colored as it was in the time mat layer. And I did the same thing in this layer, it's just a different frame. Let me turn this off for a second and you can see these are kind of like the ones that I originally had in here. It doesn't have all the center ones because I was messing around with it, but I wanted to see how much it was going to scale up. And this could look cool too, but I just didn't want it to scale up as it went out. So put that back on. All right. So the next thing is to make the text that we're going to use. As you can see, it's kind of a simple animation. You have a little source text swap right in the middle of it, so that's less apparent. And then it'll be covered up a little bit by our time remap. So I'm just going to go over this real quick about kind of how I did this. Basically, I am using two animators to do rotation. I couldn't find a way to do it with just one, and usually it's easier to do it with just a bunch of them. So what I did was ramp up one side and ramp down the other side. So let me turn this off real quick. What I came up with is a, a colored system. So I colored one side blue, colored the other side red, so I can see how much it was affecting it, kind of like uh, like a weight map or something in 3D. That allowed me to easily work on stuff and, and know what, what was selected. So as you can see, this is one of my selectors, and that is the other, and they kind of meet in the middle. The only major thing that you're going to need to change here is in this more options thing that shows up. You're going to change this to line from character or word. I don't remember what the default is. I think it's character. 
and then this grouping alignment to negative 25% on the uh, Y. If you change that, it actually, I think, puts the anchor up in here. I kind of like played around with some of the presets that After Effects has to figure this out. But if you set it to zero, see so it doesn't move, but it'll uh, rotate it differently. It rotates from the actual anchor point, and if you do negative 25%, it rotates it from the actual center of the text, from what I can tell. Negative 25 is it. I don't know why it's negative 25 and never, not like negative 50%. Negative 25 is it, and I'm not going to complain that something actually works like I want it to in After Effects. So I also made an angle control over here that just basically links each side's rotation. So everything rotates in this comp clockwise. And the last thing I changed was the easing. Um, it's still confusing to me how ease high and ease low work, but what I liked in this case was 100% on this. So ease high on this one. This is where the coloring comes into play, I guess. And then ease low on the other one, and it's set to negative 100%. And that's it for this one. Um, over here, it's basically the same setup, except it rotates the other direction. So we turn this back on. So our last steps are pretty simple. We take our radial mats, put them both in here, and we use them as track mats for the clockwise text and the counterclockwise text. So let me turn one of these off, and you can see kind of what, what it would look like without it. See, so that's one half, and this is the other half. And you put them together, and you have a hole, and that is your elementary math school lesson for the day. I am Joe Clay with Workbench.tv. No, I'm just kidding. So then we take our track mats over here, and then we add time displacement, and then we pick our mat layer that we're using for our track mat, and also for our time displacement mat. And we do the same thing with the other one, select its um, radial mat to be its displacement map. Map, mat, mat, map, 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 map. Okay, so uh, once you do that, we're gonna select some time here. As reading in the documentation, it seems like the time resolution should actually be set to whatever your uh, frame rate is, so I did that. It doesn't seem to affect it too much, and it can increase rendering time, so set it as low as possible, I guess. So then what you're going to do is play around with your displacement time. And in this case, I liked 1.6 seconds and I think it's 1.4. Yeah, 1.4 seconds. So what this will do is look at your map. At black, it'll go back in time 1.4 seconds. And at white, it'll go forward in time 1.4 seconds. Gray will not have any change. So what I found in experimenting with this is that a little bit longer time is kind of cool. Um, you can even change this up to like three seconds and you can see how it'll change. It takes a little bit to render. Time displacement is never fast. But what I like to do is change these separately so that you get a different look um, based on which direction it's rotating so that they don't look too similar. So you'll have to play with this to get different looks. This is what it looks like when we set it to three seconds. The longer the displacement time, the longer it takes to render. And also the longer your transition will be. As you can see, this one, you can actually see the text moving a little bit more than the other one. So that's why I had the other one as like 1.6, I think it was that. If you go way longer, it'll be a lot less apparent as the transitions as you saw with the three. This is going to be 1.6 again, back to where we were. And you can kind of see the learn stuff part move a little bit. But um, if you go a little longer, if you don't like that, you can just increase that time. It'll take a little longer to render, but it's a cool effect. So that's it. I'm glad I found that on Dribbble because I thought it was really cool. And it turns out that they were actually emulating somebody else's uh, work that they saw. And so I did the same thing and uh, I learned some stuff along the way. And I definitely recommend that for anybody that's trying to figure something out. Try to emulate something because you'll probably end up with a different look anyway. It won't be a copy of the original. You'll figure some stuff out. You'll have a chance to play around with After Effects and learn something that maybe you didn't know before. Um, I mean, even I learned stuff on this and I've been using After Effects for like, I don't know, 15 years. So there's always something positive you can gain by doing that. Anyway, I am Joe from Workbench. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And make sure you follow us on workbench.tv for more great tutorials. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next week. Bye.